ever wondered how objects become warmer or colder? Any matter which is made up of atoms and molecules has the ability to transfer heat. The atoms are in different types of motion at any time. The motion of molecules and atoms is responsible for heat or thermal energy and every matter has this thermal energy. And you must remember that the more the motion of the object, the molecules, the more will be the heat energy. However, if we are talking about heat transfer, it is nothing but a process of transferring of heat from high body temperature to a low temperature one. Hello my dear students, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is me once again, Teacher Teen, your science teacher for today's vlog. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science 7. Welcome to Quarter 3, Week 7 of your Module 7 for your Science 7. And for today's lesson, we're going to discuss about heat transfer. And for the learning competency or the most essential learning competency for this week's topic, infer the conditions necessary for heat transfer to occur. Okay, so but before we proceed with our main discussion about heat transfer, so, ano nga ba yung tinatawag natin na heat transfer? So, sa Tagalog, siguro may isip natin is uh, pagsasalin ng init. ba? Kaya nga, heat transfer. Pero, ano nga ba ang meaning ng heat transfer? According to thermodynamics, we define heat transfer as heat transfer is the movement of heat across the border of the system due to temperature difference between the system and its surroundings. Have you ever wondered how objects become warmer or colder? Okay, so let's analyze this situation. What do you think will happen to the pan on the top of the stove? How about what do you think will happen to the metal spoon if I leave it in the pan? Or why do you think it happened? Okay class, so we all know that ob that all objects possess energy. Kaya lang, uh, magkakaiba sila ng kanilang mga forms. Ano? So, we know that all objects possess energy which exists in different forms. Although may mga bagay na hindi naman natin kayang hawakan talaga or hipuin, but this energy could help us explain how and why these objects or these things behave the way they do. Paano nga ba nasasabi natin na ang isang object ay mainit o malamig? ba oftentimes, nasasabi natin na ang isang object ay mainit o malamig dahil sa pamamagitan ng paghawak natin dito or paghipo natin sa object na ito. Or kung minsan naman, syempre gumagamit tayo ng thermometer para malaman natin kung mainit ba o malamig ang isang object. Kahit nga sa tao, ba pag minsan nakakaramdam tayo, parang medyo mainit yata ako. So, kailang hinihipo natin yung ating leeg or yung ating mga braso or para makasigurado tayo, kukuha tayo ng thermometer para isukat or para i-measure yung, yung ating temperature. So, pag mataas na sa ating normal body temperature, so, nakoconfirm natin na ay may lagnat ako kasi mainit ako. Ganon din sa kape. Diba minsan, bago nyo inumin, parang medyo titik, uh, hahawakan nyo muna yung tasa nyo, bago nyo talaga siya buhatin, or uh, kailangan nyo tikman ng konti para ma-feel ma ma nyo kung mainit pa ba yung iinumin yung kape. This phenomenon result to a process known as heat transfer. Okay, so to fully understand this concept, so let us study the different terms that I will, that I am going to discuss to you in this vlog. Okay, so for this topic, pag-aaralan natin kung ano ba yung meaning ng thermal energy, temperature, heat, and of course, heat transfer. Okay, so let's begin with the term thermal energy or tinatawag din naman ito na heat energy. So, ano nga ba yung heat energy? So, pag sinabi natin heat energy, it is a type of 
energy stored in an object or system that depends on the motion of the objects or particles or atom. Ano ibig sabihin nito? So, nakadepende daw ito sa motion ng particles or molecules. So, kapag ang isang particle sa isang matter ay gumagalaw ng mabilis, ibig sabihin mataas ang kanyang thermal energy sa loob nito. Pero kung ang mga particles naman sa isang object or sa isang matter ay gumagalaw ng mabagal, ibig sabihin mababa ang kanyang thermal energy. Kaya nga sabi natin, di ba, thermal energy din define natin ito as the stored energy which is depends uh, which depends on how the particles is moving. So, the more it moves faster, the higher the thermal energy and the slower it moves the lower the thermal energy so ibig sabihin pala kapag kayo ay kumuha ng kettle or takore or kung ano man ang pinaglalagaan nyo ng tubig sa bahay pinakuluan nyo yan anong napapansin nyo bago nyo isa lang to sa stove di ba patag pa kumbaga hindi gumagalaw yung tubig doon sa loob ng kettle ninyo so kung walang paggalaw Ibig sabihin, mababa ang movement niya. Hindi uh, nagmumove ng mabagal yung mga particles sa loob ng tubig na yun. Pero once na na-reach niya yung mataas na temperature, pansin nyo na parang halos tumalapo na yung takip ng kettle nyo kasi nagkukuluan na yung tubig. Mas mabilis na silang nagmumove. Ang ibig sabihin nun, kung mas mabilis silang nagmumove, tumataas din ang kanyang thermal energy. So, ulitin natin, ang thermal energy, nakadepende ito kung gaano or kung paano gumagalaw ang particle sa isang matter. Next, we have this term, temperature. So, when we say temperature, this is the measures of the amount of thermal energy or the degree of hotness or coldness of an object or system. So, kung gusto nating ma-measure kung ano nga ba talaga, kung gaano kainit nga ba ang isang object or ang isang system, syempre, we use thermometer. Iba't ibang klase ng thermometer ang meron tayo para malaman natin yung exact measurement of how hot or cold an object or a system is. So, di ba, sa bahay, syempre, meron tayong mga thermometer na ginagamit sa katawan at pag pumapasa tayo ng mall, yung parang sabi natin, binabarit tayo, no? Okay, may iba't iba rin thermometer na ginagamit para sa pagkain or para naman pag nag experiment kayo, iba't ibang klase din ng thermometer ang meron tayo. Okay, next. And we also have this term, heat, which is known as, heat is the transfer of thermal energy from a body with higher temperature to a body with lower temperature. So, yan, yan yung paglipat na, ano, nung heat energy na, alam na, since alam na natin yung heat energy, ito na yung pag-isinasali na ito. So, kalimitan from higher temperature to a lower temperature. So, meron naman tayong tinatawag na heat transfer na kanina ay na-define na rin naman natin ito that according to thermodynamics, this is the uh, measurement of the heat across the border of the system with the temperature difference. Ano, ng uh, body with higher temperature with the body of lower temperature. And of course, we also define heat and uh, we also define heat transfer wherein it is the transfer of heat to different medium or forms of matter. Okay, so para mas lalo pa nating maintindihan yung tungkol dito sa heat transfer, so using the terms that we have discussed uh, earlier, so let's go back and explain the previous one. So sabi natin, lahat ng objects ay nagko-contain ng energy. Tama naman, di ba? So let's say for example, the fire. Okay, yung apoy. Ano po? The fire possess thermal energy. Kung papansin ninyo, yung fire, yung uh, anong tawag sa, ano nga, sunog or yung, yung flame, di ba? Papansin ninyo kapag may nasusunog, yung, yung, yung apoy, di ba, ang bilis niyang parang ang magalaw siya, di ba, parang sumasayaw. So, ibig sabihin, yung particles na meron dito sa fire na to ay mataas ang kanyang movement or, asya nga, mataas, higher yung kanyang movement, ibig sabihin, mataas din ang kanyang thermal energy. And, ang sabi nga natin, the fire possess uh, the fire possesses thermal energy. So, ngayon, if a fire touches the pot, its energy makes the atoms inside the pot move faster, increasing its thermal energy. So, let's say for example, may isang apoy, tapos inilagay mo doon yung isang paso. So, di ba, anong tendency ng 
paso. Di ba yung paso medyo malamig pa siya? So, pag nilag, once na nilagay mo siya dun sa fire or sa sunog or sa apoy, ayan, sa apoy nga, so, matatransfer ngayon yung init na meron sa, sa apoy papunta dun sa malamig na pat. So, ano mangyayari siya? Nagkaroon ng transfer dahil from yung mainit na dinadala ng fire ay mapupunta ngayon doon sa pat na malamig. So, ang tendency niyan is ma-acquire din ng pat yung mainit na temperature na galing doon sa fire. So, ano ibig sabihin nito? So, kagaya nga nang sabi natin, as the fire touches the pot, its energy makes the atoms from inside the pot move faster. So, umiinit din yung pot. At tumataas ang kanyang thermal energy. So, as the particle moves from slow to active, the temperature of the pot increases. Kanina, malamig pa yung pot, so mababa pa ang kanyang paggalaw ng particle sa loob ng pot. Pero since nadarangan siya ng apoy, uminit. So, ibig sabihin, tataas din ang kanyang uh, ang movement ng particles inside the pot na magre-result also sa in pag-increase ng kanyang temperature. From that example, yung pag-transfer ng, yung pag-transfer ng thermal energy from fire to the pot, ang tawag natin doon ay heat. Okay? At yung overall process naman, kung paano na-transfer yung heat mula sa fire papunta doon sa pot, ang tawag naman natin doon is heat transfer. Naintindihan nyo? Of course! Eto, na-experience nyo ba na kunwari nagpainit kayo ng tubig, naggawa kayo ng coffee na mainit, tapos yung kutsara nyo, iniwan nyo lang doon sa Uh, sa tasa na mainit na kape tapos maya maya pagbalik nyo after ilang minuto ang init, sobrang init na din ng inyong spoon or ng inyong kutsara na kasi nga iniwan nyo siya doon sa mainit na kape so anong nangyari doon? ito yung nagpapaliwanag sa atin kung bakit din naman umiinit nga naman itong uh, kutsara na iniwan natin doon sa kaping mainit okay so yung Uh, yung thermal energy na nailipat ng kape doon sa kutsara, ang tawag doon ay heat. At anong tawag naman sa kung paano siya na-transfer doon, yun naman yung tinatawag na heat transfer. So, in short, or para mas madaling maintindihan, yung, yung thermal energy na nata-transfer from one object to another, yun yung tinatawag na heat. At yung kung paano naman ito nata-transfer, ito naman yung heat transfer. So, yun yung proseso kung paano natatransfer yung thermal energy sa isang object. When thermal energy is transferred, the warmer object cools down and cooler objects warms up until both objects attain the same temperature. Then, heat transfer stops. And always remember that heat, just like any all forms of energy, is also measured in a unit that we call Joule. Yan. Or, ang kanyang symbol is letter J. Always remember and take note of this. Energy is not lost, but only changes in form. Always remember the first law of thermodynamics. This makes it possible for the energy from the fire to be transferred into the pot towards the soup and into the spoon. Okay, so let us proceed now with the process of heat transfer. So there are three ways on how the heat can be transferred. So what are those three? First, we have radiation, conduction, and we also have convection. Siguro naman nararanasan niyo din na banasin at parang ma-feel na parang ang init-init. Kahit hindi naman natin nahahawakan yung sun. Diba, pag lumabas ka ng bahay, kita mo na agad na tirik na tirik yung araw at talaga napakainit. Hindi nyo naman nahawakan yung araw. Pero paano natin nasabi na mainit at paano natin naramdaman na mainit ang sikat ng araw? So, the heat from the sun warms the different parts of the earth. And that is an example of what we call radiation, which is one way of how the heat can be transferred. Sabi nga natin, the heat from the sun warms the different parts of the earth and you can feel the heat from the sun even if you cannot touch it so those are example of what we call radiation so when we say radiation this is the heat transfer by electromagnetic waves 
through space and it does not require any interaction between the matter. Kahit hindi natin hawakan yung bagay na yun, nararamdaman natin na mainit. Yun yung example ng radiation. Yun ang tinatawag natin na radiation. So, kung kung matatandaan nyo, may pinag-aralan din tayo na sa electromagnetic spectrum na kabilang ang radiation, kailangan ng medium para ito ay mag-propagate. So, kahit hindi natin hawakan, hindi natin siya, uh, ayun nga, nahuhold, so nararamdaman natin yung pag-transfer ng heat from the sun all over the different part of the world. Okay, so aside from that, what are the different examples of radiation? Here are a group of examples of radiation in everyday life. Let's say, for example, the transmission of electromagnetic waves through the microwave oven, the heat emitted by the radiator, the solar ultraviolet radiation, precisely the process that determines the Earth's temperature, and the light emitted by the incandescent lamp, and the emission of gamma rays by a nucleus. Those are the examples of radiation in our everyday life. So let's now proceed with the second process of heat transfer. So next, we have conduction. So when we say conduction, this is the heat transfer between objects, usually solid ito, or particles that are, that are directly in contact of each other where one object's temperature rises. So na ibig sabihin ito? So, nagkakaroon ng heat transfer kapag merong contact yung parehas na object. Kagaya nga nung example natin kanina na uh, nagkakape ka tapos iniwan mo yung spoon mo doon sa inyong kape. So, ang tendency, nag-init din yung inyong spoon because of the heat, the thermal energy coming from the, uh, from your hot coffee. Okay, so example, the heat from the fire is transferred to the pot. Kasi nilagay natin yung pot doon sa fire. So, the heat from the pot is transferred to the soup. Another example is that. Okay, and then the heat from the soup is transferred to the spoon. Okay? And the heat from the spoon is transferred to your hand as you touch it. So, ibig sabihin sa conduction, ang tatandaan nyo lang dyan, is palaging may direct contact yung one object to another object para makapag para magkaroon ng transfer ng heat. So, kung nuwari nagluluto ka din, tapos ang gamit mong uh, ano bang tawag doon, chance or yung panghalo ay metal. So, since mainit siya, pag nuwari nagluluto ang spaghetti or uh, ano ba? Uh, ano nga to? <laughs> yung soup o kaya ay sopas, 'di ba? Todo halo ka or kahit anong ulam. So mapapansin niyo minsan parang kailangan niyo nang lagyan ng pot holder yung inyong panghalo kasi mainit na rin siya. Kasi nga may contact yung inyong panghalo, yung chance doon sa inyong uh, kaldero or sa pan. So nagkakaroon ng pag-transfer. So tatandaan niyo sa conduction, laging mayroong uh, direct contact yung bawat object para magkaroon ng transfer of heat. And of course, another example is yung mga metal at saka yung metals and water are good conductor. They, they, they can easily absorb or allow transfer of heat. Samantalang yung mga paper naman, yung cloth o kaya yung wood, hindi naman sila agad-agad nagkakaroon ng, uh, hindi, hindi mabilis mag-transfer ng heat sa mga bagay na to. Kalimitan lang ay sa water and metal. So, aside from this, so what are the other examples of conduction that we use in our everyday life? If you are cold and someone holds you to warm you, the heat is being conducted from their body to yours. Another example, if you leave a metal spoon propped up in a pot, it will become hot from the boiling water inside the pot. Another example, chocolate candy in your hand will eventually melt as it Heat is conducted from your hand to the chocolate. Another example, when ironing a piece of clothing, the iron is hot and the heat is transferred to the clothing. Another example, if you stoke a fire in the fireplace with a poker and leave the poker in the fire, the poker will become very hot. Okay, last, if you touch a hot stove, heat will be conducted to your finger and your skin will be burned. 
And the third one, we have convection. So what is convection? When we say convection, this is the heat transfer through fluids like liquids or gases like water and air. So what are the examples of convection? For example, when air is heated, it becomes less dense or lighter and float. But when air is cooled and become denser, which is heavier, and sinks to the bottom. This is useful for the hot air balloon. The flame heats the air inside the hot air balloon, allowing it to float. And when heat is reduced, the balloon starts to sink or move downward. Okay, so wag kayong medyo malilito kung ano ang convection. So lagi nyo lang tatandaan, sa convection, nagkakaroon ng heat transfer dahil sa mga fluids, kagaya ng air o kaya ng gases. So, paano, paano nyo ma maiintindihan kung ano ang convection? Let's say, for example, umiinom kayo ng kape. So, di ba, kapag andyan yung mainit na kape, nakikita nyo na merong steam na lumalabas dun sa mainit na kape, saan napupunta yun? Humahalo ngayon yun sa air. So, that is an example of convection, the steaming cup of hot tea or hot coffee. So, yung steam, ng, yung steam na nakikita nyo kapag umiinom kayo ng mainit na kape or mainit na tea or mainit na chocolate. So, it indicates that heat is being transferred into the air. Kaya nga may convection na nagaganap doon. So, convection yung process kung saan nagkakaroon ng heat transfer from, from hot coffee to the air. Another example is the radiator. So, a radiator puts warm air out of the top and draws a cooler air at the bottom. So, that is another example of convection. Okay, another example, ice melting. Okay, so, kunwari, kinukumuha kayo ng ice cube mula sa ref, nilagay nyo sa pinggan, tapos nilagay nyo lang siya sa sa ibabaw ng lamesa ninyo. Hindi mo naman siya pinakuluan or ininit or what, pinabayaan mo lang siya. Pero bakit natunaw yung ice? Kasi nagkaroon na ng transfer ng heat. Yung surrounding, papunta dun sa ice cube para siya mag-melt at bumaba ang kanyang temperature. So, sa ice melting, na, na uh, ang tog <laughs> sa yung na-melt na yung ice, kasi nga, so, nagkaroon ng movement ng heat from the air going to the ice. So, bumaba ang temperature dahil sa transferring ng heat from air to the ice. Okay, so going back to our previous example, let us summarize what we discussed in today's vlog. And let us identify the type of heat transfer that occurred in the process. The heat from the fire is transferred into the pot by radiation where the heat travels through waves. The heat from the pot is then transferred into the soup in the process of conduction, where heat is transferred by direct contact between materials. When we stir the soup with a spoon or a ladle, the heat from the soup is transferred into the spoon with the help of convection, where heat is transferred through the help of fluids. And when we touch the spoon, we feel the heat from the spoon to our hands by conduction. But the heat coming from the boiling pot of soup can be felt even if we do not touch it because of radiation. So you see, a simple activity like this involves a lot of process to happen. Isn't it amazing? Okay, so for your activity, I'm going to show you different examples of how heat can be transferred from one object to another. And I want you to identify what heat transfer occurs in this process or in this situation. Okay, are you ready? Okay, let's begin. First, we have this one. You feel the heat from the flame without touching. Is it convection, conduction, or radiation? Without touching. Okay, very good. That is radiation. Very good. So, let's proceed with number two. Okay, this one. You prepared a cup of tea and the cup feels warm when touched. When touched. So, there's a direct contact. Okay, very good. That is conduction. How about the third one? This one. 
A raw egg begins to fry as it hits the pan. Okay, there's still a direct contact, so that means it is conduction pa din. Okay, how about for number four, this one. The warmth from the sun can make the sand and the water hot. Okay, that's good. That is radiation. Let's proceed with number five. Okay, this one. The food gets warm when placed into the microwave oven. Okay, that is also radiation. Very good. Now, number six. The clothes become flat and warm when it iron it. When we iron it. Okay, that is conduction. Dahil may direct contact, diba? Okay, and how about this last number? Air cones are placed on high places because warm air rises and cool air sinks. Okay, that is convection. Okay, very good. We already know that different materials have different ways of absorbing heat. Hindi lahat ng objects ay pare-parehas kung paano sila nag absorb ng heat. May mga objects na mabilis silang mag-absorb ng heat at may mga bagay naman or may mga objects na matagal bago sila makapag-absorb ng heat. So, sa susunod nating task, okay, sa i-discuss ko at i-explain ko ng task na gagawin nyo, so, you will explore the different methods by which the heat can be transferred from one material to another. Okay. So, for activity number three, all at once, so this is what you're going to do. In this activity, which is uh, entitled All at Once, you have to study the illustration given to you and presented here, and you have to identify the different examples of situations that involves the different methods of heat transfer. So, you have to take note that in your chosen situation, there could be more than one form of heat transfer involved. So you have to choose at least three examples and accomplish this task by filling up the table below. Okay, so as you can see in this uh, table, you have to copy and complete the table below based on your analysis of the illustration above. So meron tayo dito ang table 3 examples of heat transfer and description of this of the cho chosen situation and then which object or objects release heat which object absorbs heat and what is the method of heat transfer okay so let's say for example nakikita niyo sa picture na nagluluto may nagluluto ano okay so kunwari gumamit ng pan si uh, ch chef number 1 so ano ba ang nag ano yung object na nag-release ng heat Let's say, for example, yung fire. Okay, and then, ano yung object na naka-absorb ng heat? Let's say, for example, yung pan. So, anong klase ng method? Anong klase ng method or anong method ng heat transfer ang nangyari between the fire and the pan? So, na-example na naman natin yan. I mean, na-discuss natin yan during our uh, discussion. So, I guess it's very easy for you to identify uh, which one is convection, conduction, or radiation. And for your next activity, activity number four, so you have to choose from the given samples and answer it based on what you have learned from our discussion about heat transfer. So there are four questions here. Number one, so you have to explain the reasons why we use cloth or pot holders or oven cloth or oven gloves when handling pads inside the kitchen. Question number two, explain the reason why we can feel the heat from the sun even we are inside the house. Number three, explain the reasons why the water in the beach feels warm during the night and feels cool during the day. And number four, explain the reason why paper burns when touched by fire. And explain the reasons why ice melts when we hold it. At this point, you have learned that heat is the transfer of thermal energy. This energy is possessed by an object due to the motion of its particles. When object's thermal energy increase, its temperature changes from cool to warmer. When heat is absorbed from one material to another, 
heat transfer occurs. This process can happen in three ways. Conduction, where heat is transferred between materials that are in direct contact with each other. While radiation occurs when heat is transferred by electromagnetic waves through space. And lastly, convection, where heat is transferred in fluids like gases and liquids, which making the hot fluids to rise and cold fluids to sink. When heat is absorbed from one material to another, heat transfer occurs. Okay, so this is the end of our lesson vlog for today's topic. And for our next discussion, we are going to discuss about different types of charging process. So I hope to see you next time for our next lesson vlog. This is me once again, Teacher Tin, your science teacher for today. I hope you learned something from me. At kung meron man, please leave your comment below para naman ma-inspire din ako sa inyo. Alam niyo naman na na-inspire din ako kapag nagbabasa ako ng mga comments ninyo na nakatulong sa inyo ang video lesson na to. So I hope until the end, I tayo ay magkakasama pa rin. And please do subscribe in my YouTube channel. And you can share it also with your classmates or kung sino mang kakilala nyo from your students kung kayo man po ay teacher. Maraming salamat po for using this video lesson. At thank you po dahil nakakatulong din naman kahit pa paano ang mga ganitong klase ng video lesson. So, ayun lang po. Maraming salamat and I hope to see you next time. Bye! And good luck!